What's weird is that South Korea has moved in the direction of appeasement. So they've elected their own sort of Neville Chamberlain figure. Uh, that would be the president of North Korea, whose, uh, whose name is Moon. And the president of North Korea is, is committed to what he calls a sunlight policy. The sunlight policy is a policy of detente with the North Koreans. President Moon Jae-in is actually the guy who conveyed Kim's supposed offer to meet to the Americans. His office said that North Korea, quote, has ample intention of holding talks with the United States. And he has another agenda here, which is that he is not particularly fond of the U.S. having a military presence in South Korea. Now, it is the U.S. military presence in South Korea that essentially guarantees there's not another Korean war. It's the American presence in South Korea that guarantees that North Korea, maybe with Chinese support, doesn't walk across that 38th parallel and just walk right into the heart of Seoul. Because the fact is that the United States has a, a trigger mechanism uh, in foreign policy. We have a, a trigger mechanism, meaning that we have a, a certain number of troops that are along the border. And if that border were to be breached, the United States would immediately be enmeshed in a war with the North Koreans. The North Koreans know that. If the United States were to remove support from the South Koreans, the calculus would change very quickly. And at the very least, the North Koreans and the Chinese could pressure the South Koreans for all sorts of concessions. They could push them into their own sphere of influence on trade, on defense. It could get very ugly very quickly without the U.S. continuing to, to be there and, and allying with the South Koreans on a military level. But the current regime in South Korea, the current administration in South Korea, is not real fond of that. They don't want the United States deploying anti-missile technology in South Korea. They don't want the United States deploying troops in South Korea. And so they're honestly sort of working on behalf of the North Koreans to make a move that would push the United States out to the fringe on South Korean, uh, on South Korean ground. So, and so the, the talking point for people who are big Trump fans is that Trump forced the North Koreans to the table with all of this language. That Trump showed he wasn't going to budge, and now the North Koreans are going to come to the table and they're going to cave. That seems unlikely to me. It seems more like this is a calculated ploy by the, by the North Koreans to gain concessions from the West in exchange for an empty promise. The reason I say this is because this has been the North Korean way of doing business for nigh on 60 years. With the South Korean security advisor Chung Yu Yong, I think I'm pronouncing that wrong, but he, he said that North Korea is now committed to denuclearization. I'll explain what he means by this in a second, because if you read the headline, that sounds great. North Korea is going to get rid of its nukes. If you know what he means, it's not that great. Here's what he had to say. The Republic of Korea, along with the United States, Japan, and our many partners around the world, remain fully and resolutely committed to the complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. When he says that North Korea is committed to denuclearization, understand the absolute stated program of the North Korean government is we want denuclearization of the entire peninsula. What that means is we want the United States to remove its troops from South Korea. So we'll get rid of our nuclear program if and only if the United States removes its troops from South Korea and the United States stops engaging in military exercises with the South Koreans. I think that Kim wants to make that pitch directly to Trump. He wants to say, listen, we can walk out of here with the greatest deal. You'll win the Nobel Peace Prize. Right? We'll walk out of here and you'll have been the guy who disarmed the Kim regime and all have been the guy who allowed the Korean Peninsula to finally stand up on its own. He can make a nationalist appeal to Trump. And it would be a bad move by Trump because, again, if the United States does not have troops in South Korea, this radically changes the situation on the ground, not only militarily, but in terms of economics and trade, in terms of foreign policy, spheres of influence, protection of particular trade corridors. Right? All of this goes in by the wayside if the United States were to pull its troops out of South Korea, which is why we've never really considered it before. It's possible, however, that Trump falls for that routine. Now, what's again, what's funny is you're seeing the left wing media very excited about all this. Aaron Burnett said that if Trump solves North Korea, he will be seen as a great president. Here's what she had to say. All right. Well, thanks very much to all of you. Just an extraordinary evening. And of course, opening the door to the big question. If president Trump can truly solve this problem. Uh, that would be going down as a great president. And there's no way around that. That is the reality here. OK, well, is that the reality or is it just that y you are going to celebrate that? And if that's the case, if that's what Trump is going for, if what Trump really wants out of life is this big win, then I'm not sure exactly you know, how he doesn't get played by Kim. The way that you negotiate best is when you're willing to walk away from the table. The question now is, is Trump going to be willing to walk away from the table? That's questionable. That's questionable. The biggest problem here is that you could see a situation in which Trump goes into the meeting. An offer is made by Kim. It's not a good offer. It's an offer like, get all the troops out of South Korea and we will denuclearize. And Trump says, sure, let's do it. Because, hell, I don't really like this alliance with South Korea all that much anyway. I've made noises along those lines. There's a good piece by, uh, by Thomas Wright over at The Atlantic talking about all of this, pointing out that Trump is not oriented toward the alliance with North Korea in a particularly strong way. 
Uh, he writes, says, since the mid-1980s, he has argued that America's alliances are a bad deal. Initially, his wrath was focused on Japan and the Arab states, but in 2013, he said, how long will we go on defending South Korea from North Korea without payment? When will they start to pay us? And then he said, in 2015, we have 28,000 soldiers on the line in South Korea between the madman and them. We get practically nothing compared to the cost of this. So maybe he will get to withdraw troops, which he wants, in exchange for an end to ICBM testing, which he also wants. You could see Trump making this deal. It would be bad for the United States because that's bad policy. It's possible that he's, he plays this as America first. 